In Lab 3, Procedure Part 1, we can copy this link by just right mouse clicking and saying Copy Link. We can then go here in Kyle Studio Cloud and say File, Clone, right mouse click, and Paste. Now we're not going to call it Embed OS Blinky, we're going to call it Lab 3 Part 1, and we're going to make it the active project. Now right now we're seeing the README file, so if we slide down here and click on Main, we've got these lines of code here. Now before we start, we should select a target, and we're going to type in FRDM, and we're going to pull up 64. We're also going to go to No Hardware Selected and select Freedom K64, which we have connected, and click here on the big S. And then we have access to everything that we need. Now what it tells us is to actually comment out line 15, line 16, and line 18. And then what we want to do is then go to the debug and debugger code. When you go to debug mode, it switches to this icon here in the left side. And it gives you all of these different things on the left hand side to deal with debugging. You have this which is, says continue, which is how you run your code. This is step over, step into, and step out. And when you step into, sometimes you might get into the hardware abstraction layer. Stepping out takes you out of the hardware abstraction layer. This restarts your code and this actually stops your code so you can go back and make changes to your code here. So if we want, we can switch back here to this which is our Explorer, and you can see all of these things are not highlighted anymore. It says debug in progress, which reminds you, you should really go back to this screen here. Now it tells you in the lab to actually run the code. So to run the code, we can click here. And at this point, you should see on your Freedom K64, the red light flashing. I can pause here to stop it. And then we can go back to our board here. We can click here to reset out of the hardware abstraction layer back to something we can understand. And then we can stop here, and this is going to put us back to this level here. Now we did the debug to just run it, but debug has a lot more things like step into, step over, and so forth. If we just want to run it, we can always just hit this, and it does exactly the same thing as we've seen before, but it doesn't give us debug capabilities. What it really does is it builds the project, which it's doing now, build succeeded, flashing, which is downloading it to the board, preparing to run, and then it will say that the program is running. And at this point, when it says it's running, you should see the red light flashing. So we can either do a debug to look at details, or we can just do a quick run here. So you saw on your Freedom K64 that the flashing light was actually red. So we can write in red here. What it's saying now is to uncomment line 16, comment outline 14, and change the variable named led in the while loop to led2 and then run it again and see which color you're flashing. So let's see how we go about doing that. Line 16, we're going to uncomment that. We're going to comment out line 14. And uh, we're going to change down here where it says lead to lead 2, and this to lead 2. And then to do the quick run, we're just going to hit here. It's going to build our code, and when it says it's running, we can check and see what color of lead is actually flashing on the board. On the next part here, 2C, it says uncomment all lines of code. And we're going to do step into, step out, and each digital out to figure out which one of the digital out statements is not correct. And we're going to uncomment this, uncomment this, and uncomment this. And then we're going to actually use our troubleshooting icon here because we're going to do a step into and step out of this to see if it's going to change a color. I'm going to do step into step out of this and see if it changes the color and do a step into step out of this. Now if you remember this is red, green, and blue. So if we step into and step out of this, we expect to see red. If we then step into and step out of that, we should see red and green mixed, which should give us yellow. If we then go here and step into and step out of this, if everything is perfect, red, green, and blue will give us white. And if we don't get red, yellow, and white, whatever color is not set up here, that's how we know which one is incorrect. So right now it's flashing everything. Now that we've got our arrow here, we can say step into. So let's step into that code. There we go. We're in the hardware abstraction layer. We're going to step out. And at this point, you should see the red led on. If we step into again and again, one more till we get to the hardware abstraction layer, and then we step out, we should see at this point yellow but we don't, which means this is incorrect. Now if we step into this one, and again, and back out again, well at this point we should see white, but now we're seeing sort of a magenta purple color because this one here is not right. Now if you go to the two minute mark of the first video in lab three, 
you'll find over here that the correct numbers here for lead 1 is PTB22, lead 2 is PTE26, and lead 3 is PTB21. And therefore, you can tell from that what the right answer should be. Now, what it says here is correct the digital out statement to the correct version you had in Part C. Remember to run debug from the main screen to update your code. And then we're going to set a breakpoint at line 18. So what we've done is we've made the change here. We're going to make sure that we get out of here because we have to go now and run the debug again. So if we hit our debug, and then we're going to set a breakpoint on line 18. So right now it's flashing the code. It's going to switch over here to our debug icon shortly. It's finished flashing. And we have to wait until the arrow or the continue shows up right now. Right now it's saying pause, but we have to wait until that arrow is there. And as it said, set a breakpoint. And the way you do this is you just click to the left of line 18 here. Then we're going to hit the run button here or continue. When we do, it stopped on this line. It hasn't executed anything yet other than just these digital outs. And we should see at this point white on our lead. And what it says is to step into and step out to see what the color change is. You can, should be able to see that the color change is yellow because we've had red, green, and blue to make white. And then we've taken away blue, which means we just have red and green. We should have yellow. If we now step into and step out, you should see that the color is now red. If we step into and step out, the color should be off. For RGB LEDs or red, green, blue LEDs, turning on two or more LEDs of the three LEDs causes color mixing in an additive way. And we're going to refer to a link to see what the different color changes are when the RGB LEDs are turned on. We're going to look at red and green, blue and green, red and blue, and red, blue, and green. Now, if you happen to look at this link and scroll down, we're going to see these are additive colors here. So red, and green make yellow. Green and blue make cyan, which is a light blue. Red and blue make magenta. And red, green, and blue together make white. So when we go back here, we should be able to, from that little chart, be able to fill these in. 